I heard someone say recently that emotional attachments to cars are born from cars having innate imperfections. This car is so quirky and so unique. I've basically created a bond with it that's unlike anything. It's about experiencing something that's drastically different from the everyday. And I think that's how I've managed to fall so deeply in love with it. There's clearly something in certain people that draws them to things that are mechanically fascinating. It's, it's not born, I think, out of any simple to explain desire or need. I, I think it runs far deeper than that. You kind of sometimes have to give up control because the machine's going to do what the machine kind of wants to do. It's not even about the roads and the scenery, it's about rowing the gears and operating this absolutely ridiculous vehicle. We did a lot of research on um, period Mercedes that were racing and uh, the kind of appropriate Southern California racer look. What I learned in doing the research is Mercedes actually sold a Rennsport kit. The cut down doors and windshield are pretty much to the T of the OEM kit. This car is down to a T how Mercedes would have sold the car in West Coast showrooms for sports racing. It's, it's actually incredibly stupid, but we didn't rebuild the gearbox, we didn't rebuild the engine, we did rebuild the carburetors, and we rebuilt the braking system. Conveniently, the one other guy that owned it decided to put period correct Webers on it, probably at some point in the late 60s based on the manifold design. What you end up with is effectively a pedal that's an on-off switch. The car feels absolutely incredible under full throttle. It changes the way you drive because you look for these opportunities to be flooring the car. I don't really understand how anyone actually got around in the mid-1960s based on the rate that things break at, but um, it's a positive experience. I, I find that in between my home and wherever I'm going, basically getting in a cosplay time machine as a 1950s racing driver really seems to end up with me being refreshed wherever I'm getting. <laughs> We didn't do anything that wouldn't have been appropriate to do in the, in the early 1960s, uh, with the exception of the modern suspension. But it, it was very important to me not to bastardize something uh, into something that it never was and never would have been. Uh, I, I wanted it to, to stay true to what the car was, and I, I believe that we did that. One of the amazing things about this car is because it's so much unlike anything modern is it's, it's almost like a mental reset driving it. You, you can't really think about anything else when you're driving because you're being hit in the face by 50 mile an hour wind. You can smell everything, you can hear everything.
It's that same feeling of release after a long day at work. Not only is it relaxing, it's cathartic and fun. And there's nothing better I can think of for that than a car with no windshield that you have to dress up like Sterling Moss to drive around your own neighborhood. There'll be times where I'll be in downtown here and, and I just look at the big white wheel in front of me and the old yellow gauges and think, wow, I actually own this thing. It's basically the perfect car. The fact that I just happened to luck into it on a walk with my dad in my grandparents' neighborhood, and then that it, that it ran uh, with only a new battery and a fuel tank on the top of it. The fact that you could take something that has that much history and is that old and that original and then actually drive it every day, that is the dream.